survival hunter. Melee, melee, melee. Never thought I'd see the day that they try and revert back to this, but they did. And unfortunately, well, it's not bad, but it ain't great, unfortunately. With the way that they've got this played, you are the only hunter with traps now, thus the name survival, which it does end up fitting quite well, but you and your pet have a special bond. A special bond indeed. And we'll go over that in the actual abilities, which we'll do right now. Alright, we're here taking a look at the abilities, and I did mention that you and your pet have a special bond. Now, what I will end up saying about this, let me go straight into the pet's abilities here, and we're going to move over to Hunting Companion. Passive, chance to gain a stack of mongoose bites. So, as it's attacking, it's going to give you a chance to gain a stack of mongoose bite, and we'll actually go over this a bit more, because it is also your mastery. As you can see, Mastery, Hunting Companion, your pet's attacks have an 8.2% chance to grant you an additional charge of Mongoose Bite. Not a high chance at all, but it does end up playing decently, and we'll go over this a little bit more, starting with Aspect of the Cheetah. Instant, 3 minute cooldown, increases your movement speed by 90% for 3 seconds, and then 30% for another 9 seconds. It's kind of got a uh, little bit of a burst on a three minute cooldown. It's not a whole hell of a lot. And really, I want. It, a lot of people probably feel the same way that the old Cheetah was way better. And that's probably one of the reasons why it got nerfed down. It was too mobile. Aspect of the Eagle. Now, this is going to be your new cooldown. And it's on a two minute CD. Grants you and your pet 10% increased critical strike chance on all abilities and increases your chance to gain mongoose or gain charges of mongoose bite by 100%. So, this increases your chance to gain charges of mongoose bite by 100%. It doesn't make it a 100% chance. So that 8% that you end up seeing while this is active actually switches to 16%. It's just going to double your chance of getting one. Not a lot of excess play out of this but it does still end up working out fairly decent and then we'll move on to aspect of the turtle this is the new deterrence three minute cooldown deflects all attacks and reduces all damage you take by 30 percent for eight seconds but you cannot attack and it's just going to put this funky shell over you making you immune to damage fits a little bit better on the aspect side instead of deterrence where you had some weird magical blade spinning around i can i, I get that call pet just call whatever pet that you've got available Camouflage is a talent, we'll go over that later. Carve is an AoE ability. It's 40 focus, instant, a sweeping attack that strikes all enemies in front of you for very minor physical damage. Not a lot of damage out of this unless you spec into it. Eagle Eye changes your viewpoint. This is just going to give you a different location from a different area. We'll go ahead and uh, stand over here and then, you know, you get the targeting ret reticle and you look and voila there we are standing off into the distance nothing great it just gives you a little bit of an area to where you might get away with doing a pet pull later on exhilaration instant two minute cooldown heals you for 30 percent and your pet for hundred percent of maximum health just a general pop yourself up if you're in dire need didn't really notice a lot of use out of that one feign death instant feign death tricking enemies into ignoring you lasts up to six minutes so this is just the same deal you're gonna croak out and it's on a 30 second cooldown. Now the bad part is your pet doesn't play dead. Unfortunately, they haven't built that mechanic in there yet to where the pet plays dead also. Flanking strikes. Now this is a neat ability and this is one of your core abilities. 50 focus, 5.45 second cooldown. A coordinated attack on a target where you deal 28,500 whatever physical damage and you deal and your pet deals basically right around the same amount. If the target is attacking you, your pet's attack will deal 50% increased damage and 400% increased threat. Otherwise, your attacks will deal 50% increased damage. So if this is already attacking your pet, you're going to do additional damage. If it's attacking you, your pet's going to do additional damage and increase its threat. So it's kind of like a taunt mixed into it. Flanking Strike also has double the normal chance to trigger Hunting Companion. So again, that 8% mastery that I've got, this is actually going to make it 16 every single time that I hit Flanking Strike. And then if this is already 16 while under Aspect of the Eagle, that 16% is going to turn into 32. Like I said, it kind of all ties together. 
Flare, instant, 20 second cooldown, expose hidden enemies. This is the same as what we've always seen. Uh, it, you just toss out a flare and it's going to expose enemies in the area that might be invisible. Great for Vault of the Wardens. I've mentioned that many, many times on the other videos. Fury of the Eagle. It's channeled, 45 second cooldown, fiercely strikes all enemies in front of you, dealing very high physical damage. Damage increased by Mongoose Fury. Now what Mongoose Fury is, just so you guys know, it's based off of Mongoose Bite, and the first time that you cast Mongoose Bite, it's going to give you this 12 second window and stack up to 6 times. Each time you hit Mongoose Bite, it's going to increase it, the damage of Mongoose Bite by 50%. Well, this is going to end up getting the same benefit. And we'll read through the Mongoose Bite one when we get to it, but just know that this is going to be benefited up to 300% increased damage. Harpoon, this is how you get around guys, this is your new grapple, basically you're going to have your enemy targeted and you're going to end up throwing that out there and it doesn't work on target dummies, but normally it would end up pulling you to the enemy, it's basically like a reverse grip and it works out pretty decently for getting around, pretty mobile and it nothing else really ends up coming off of it. Hatchet toss, tosses a hatchet at the enemy, and just throw an axe. Lacerate, 35 focus, instant. 10 second cooldown, requires two handed melee weapon, tears a bleeding wound in the target dealing 96,000 physical damage over 12 seconds. This does some really high damage and you can also end up having this thing to where it does some certain special abilities through the talents, we'll go over that here in a bit. But on a 10 second cooldown, if you keep this thing on cooldown, you're going to do a lot of additional damage and with that 10 second cooldown on there and it lasting 12 seconds remember that extra tick usually always adds back on so you aren't losing anything and it's great damage mongoose bite this specs bread and butter it is extremely important it's instant there's a 10.9 second recharge you have three charges of this attempts to sever the targets limbs with a brutal attack that deals decent amount of physical damage and grants you mongoose fury now mongoose fury increases mongoose bite damage by 50 percent for 12 seconds stacking up to six times successive attacks do not increase the duration so you have a 12 second window to get as many of these off as possible and then once that 12 second window is gone you're going to want to stop hitting mongoose bite until you get two and three quarter charges roughly you'll end up getting a, or at least two and a half charges once you get that last one where it's about halfway through you usually can start right back into this rotation of doing this insane mongoose bite damage and we'll go a little more over that in the actual gameplay but we'll also end up looking at it in the logs to see where the damage lies muzzle interrupt spell casting this is just your normal interrupt pet utility you still have the same basic pet utility beast lore Dismiss pet, feed pet, men pet, tame beast, all the same. Raptor strike, it's just your weak last, like bottom of the priority to end up hitting ability. Traps, as mentioned, you are the only one with traps left. You still have your freezing trap, you still have your explosive trap, and you still have your tar trap. Now the thing about these is, tar trap is going to hurt, well, these are new, alright, tar trap, Rolls a tar trap to the target location, creates a 10 yard radius pool of tar around themselves, which it just reduces movement speed by 50%. Explosive trap has had a huge change. Tosses a fire trap on the ground in front of you, doing a very high amount of damage. This thing does huge damage, and then freezing trap's exactly the same. Now, one thing I will notice, you might end up seeing the effect, I want you to see it, and it just blew straight up. Normally it looks pretty damn cool. And it does a hell of a lot of damage um, if you spec for it. It does a ton of damage. And we'll go over that here in just a little bit. Wing Clip is back. Maims the target, reducing movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. We went over the Mastery. And again, more Mastery is going to be more charges of Mongoose Bite. A better chance of actually getting yourself into those procs and just straight up destroying things. Survivalist, after you kill a target, you and your pet gain 15% health over 10 seconds. Now that's why I was saying that exhilaration really didn't have much of a use unless it was dire in moments. Because as you kill stuff, you're getting 15% of your health back anyways. 
So with this, let's go ahead and move straight on into the talents and see what we can do from there. Alright, taking a look at the talents here. Level 15, the very first one is Animal Instincts. Passive, Flanking Strike also grants you the instincts of your pet for 7 seconds, providing one of the following combat enhancements. Instinct of the Raptor, increases haste by 10%. Instinct of the Cheetah, increases movement speed by 20%. Instinct of the Mongoose, increases mastery by 10%. This is neat, but it's just an extreme RNG flavor you never know what's going on and it could end up being good it could end up being bad this is almost making your flanking strike to the point of where it looks like elemental blast except adding movement speed in instead of something that might actually be useful throwing axes 15 focus instant 13.6 second recharge you get two charges on this Tosses three axes at the enemy, each dealing a decent amount of physical damage. Nothing great, though. If for some reason you have to end up being away, it's it's not that bad. But in most cases, you're going to be right there to begin with. Now, Way of the Machnathal. It's passive. Raptor Strike also grants you Machnathal tactics, increasing your attack power by 3% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 4 times. With... Raptor Strike being way down on the priority list, this was kind of a pain to keep up because you'd have everything else going. It still ends up being a little bit more of a damage increase, but actually keeping those four stacks up is kind of a pain in the ass. Not going to lie, you've got a lot of other things going on, and it is really kind of a pain in the ass to keep it up on that short window. So, Animal Instincts may end up taking over, but right now I was just using this one to end up doing some testing with it as to where again animal instincts it's it's very rng now level 30 you got caltrops replaces tar trap scatter caltrops in an area for 15 seconds enemies who step on a caltrop will take bleed damage every one second and have 70 percent reduced movement speed for six seconds really it's not a whole hell of a lot of use it's just some general damage and a slow instead of uh, just a slow Improved traps reduce the cooldown on freezing trap by 15% and the cooldown of explosive trap and tart trap by 50% This plays very nicely in the expert trapper and we'll go into that in a few minutes But currently this is the best route to end up going Steel trap replaces freezing trap hurls a steel trap to the target location that immobilizes the first enemy that approaches for 30 seconds and deals insane amount of bleed damage over 30 seconds other damage may break the immobilizing effect Limit 1, trap will exist for 1 minute. Post Haste, passive. Harpoon also frees you from all movement impairing effects and increases your movement speed by 60% for 8 seconds. This was just the better way to end up running back and forth. Far Strider, passive. Your ability criticals have a 10% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Harpoon. And then Dash, increases the duration of Aspect of the Cheetah by 3. So with that, level 60, a murder of crows. 30, focus. 1 minute cooldown summons a flock of crows to attack your target over time for the next 15 seconds. If the target die is well under attack, a murder crows cooldown is reset. This doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of damage and on a boss fight it really on a 1 minute cooldown it's not that great. So instead of actually taking a murder of crows, I went with mortal wounds. Each time lacerate deals damage, you have a 2% chance to gain a charge of mongoose bite. Having an increased chance for Mongoose Bite, being that the Mongoose Bite is your bread and butter, is the way to end up going, and Lacerate does too much damage not to keep it up. Snake Hunter, instant, one minute cooldown, instantly grants you three charges of Mongoose Bite. This is going to help burst windows by a ton, so if you're looking at trying to burst and get a hell of a lot of damage out, this is going to be, be the way to do it without worrying about RNG. 75 sticky bomb instant 30 second cooldown hurls a concussive grenade at your target which sticks to them and explodes after three seconds knocking back all nearby enemies really this is it's just a general knockback nothing too great uh it's gonna stick to them and then knock them back which can end up scattering them all over the place pissing off your tank rangers net replaces wing clip one second cooldown Hurls a net at the enemy, rooting the target for 3 seconds, and then reducing movement speed by 50%. Where this ends up getting a change is the fact that it just roots them for 3 seconds instead of just reducing damage. Or reducing movement speed, sorry. 
Camouflage. Instant one minute cooldown. You and your pet blend into the surroundings and gain stealth for one minute. While camouflage, you'll heal for 2% every one second. So, same thing as what's on live. You just blend in and uh, you're healing for this duration. Also, it's a good way to just sneak around a bit and gain some health back. Level 90, Butchery replaces Carve. Now this is going to improve your AoE by a ton. Strike all nearby enemies in a flurry of strikes, inflicting 43,920 physical damage to each. Now, this does have charges, 13-point second recharge, and what you're looking at is actually three charges, and it looks like that. That's all you end up seeing. We'll go on to Dragon's Fire Grenade. Instant 30 second cooldown. Hurls a Dragon's Fire Grenade at the target that explodes into flames, inflicting heavy fire damage over 8 seconds and reducing movement speed by 20%. The volatile flames on the target also scorch nearby enemies for very little damage every one second. This is uh, just the general that we've seen across the board on some to where it has a little bit of AoE off to the side but does some mass damage at front. And then you got Serpent Sting, which is kind of the in between. Now, targets hit by your Raptor Strike and Carve are also affected by a Serpent Sting, dealing 41,000 nature damage over 15 seconds. This is a great damage piece, but again, it doesn't feel like it lines up well with this, and it actually nothing really feels like it lines up well, well with this through the testing I've done. Um, it's just very hard to keep up with the, everything else that needs to be done. Targets hit by your Raptor Strike, though, will end up doing some additional damage, and then Carve... This ends up putting Serpent Sting up, causing some insane AoE damage on everything in front of you. Real nice end up seeing. Level 100, Spitting Cobra, instant, 1 minute cooldown. Summons a Spitting Cobra for 30 seconds that attacks your target for very little nature damage every 2 seconds. While the Cobra is active, you gain an extra 3 focus every 1 second. Focus really wasn't something that was too bad. I mean, it really wasn't, but it's, yeah, we'll show you the ability here in a minute. But then you've got Expert Trapper. Actually, neither one of these have a cooldown. Here you go. This is what you get to see whenever it comes out. And there's the Spitting Cobra. So it's just going to sit there because I'm not doing anything. But here. There you go. And it's just going to sit back and spit. And it really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of damage. It's just there for the focus gen. Now, Expert Trapper is the way to go. Um... Every way that I've tried, this is actually 100% positive, and it's due to Explosive Trap. All your traps are improved in the following ways. Freezing Trap. When Freezing Trap incapacitates, uh, incapacitate effect ends, the victim and all nearby enemies' movement speed is reduced by 50%, so you do end up having a slow on there. Explosive Trap increases Explosive Trap's damage to the triggering enemy by 100%. Huge amounts of single target damage coming out of this thing every 30 seconds. Tar Trap, enemies moving through the tar have a chance to be rooted in place for 4 seconds. Steel Trap, your Steel Trap also deals immediate bleed damage when triggered. And increases Caltrop's damage by 50%. So it does play very nicely with all of your different traps depending on which way you want to go. And Explosive Trap, single target hits like a truck. Aspect of the Beast. Flanking Strike causes an additional effect based on your pet specialization. Ferocity, the target also bleeds for just about 8,000 physical damage every 6 seconds. Tenacity, your pet also takes 15% reduced damage. Cunning, the target's movement speed is also reduced by 50% for 4 seconds. So depending on which spec you have, the better off you are. And the bleed does do pretty solid amounts of damage, but it does not beat out this explosive trap. With this, let's move on to the artifact. Here we are taking a look at the skins real quick, and as you can see, it's not a bad looking pole arm. I mean, it's there's been better models out there, but the baseline one's not that great. We'll let look at Eagle's Rebirth. It gets a little bit better. Letting it spin around, spin, spin, spin. And there you have it. This is Eagle's Rebirth. Not bad at all. Looks really, really good. Spear of the Alpha, got the little wolf's head on there, decent. And then Serpent Strike, this is the PvP one. And there you have it. It's not bad looking, but there's way better out there, way better. And they still have a couple hidden ones, so we'll end up finding out about those later on. 
but currently this is what we've got for skins and we'll move on to the actual traits so we're looking at the artifact traits and before we go anywhere i did want to mention that there is a random proc on this and i wasn't able to catch it to where i caught it on recording or anything to where i could actually show you but what it does and i'm not sure if it's tied in with your pet or not because i noticed most of the time it would do it it would be like if my pet accidentally died it would drop down but i didn't test it all that much but what you would get is this big ass eagle would come down and it would protect you and it would just do some pretty crazy damage randomly mind you out in the open world it never ended up happening in a dungeon but out in the open world it would just show up and do some damage then it would give you a three month uh, three minute debuff timer so I believe it's actually tied to your pet and if your pet dies um, being the fact that you know this this hunter it I've got it set up for damage my pet did die a few times instead of actually tanking and I wasn't messing with it that well but I did want to note that that every now and then if you do have an issue this big ass eagle comes down and it actually starts killing everything and then gives you a three minute debuff timer for it to happen again and with that we'll move on to the actual traits fury of the eagle it's channeled 45 second cooldown and we did mention this in the abilities but it furiously strikes all enemies in front of you dealing very high physical damage damage is increased by mongoose fury now that means this thing depending on how well you play this and if you can get the timing right this thing can have up to 300 percent increased damage very solid now we're looking at iron talons increases physical damage you deal by eight percent this is the first thing you get as soon as you end up getting this artifact all you do is just increase physical damage still pretty solid then we'll go out to hell carver rank zero three carve deals three percent additional damage for each additional target hit and that's going to be three six or ten percent raptors cry rank zero three increases damage dealt by raptor strike by five ten or fifteen percent increases explosive traps damage by three six or ten percent this is going to be great because like i said explosive trap hits very hard if you end up taking the expert traps aspect of the skylord rank zero one aspect of the eagle increases all damage you deal by 30 percent for its duration so your two minute cooldown is going to have a little bit more benefit to it then you got terms of engagement rank zero one the, the remaining cooldown on harpoon is reset when you kill an enemy Hunter's Guile, rank 01, reduces the cooldown of your traps by 20%. Lacerating Talons, rank 03, increases damage dealt by Lacerate by 3, 6, or 10%. Hunter's Bounty, reduces the remaining cooldown on your acceleration by 5 seconds each time you kill an enemy. So, this is going to be 5, 10, or 15 seconds. As you end up going through and killing, it's going to reduce the cooldown on acceleration. But again, every time you kill something, you, heal your, you and your pet heal for 15% to begin with. This is going to be for later on when you're actually doing some insane like world questing more than likely. Eagle's Bike, rank 01, Harpoon applies on the trail a unique damage over time effect that deals 50,000 damage over 12 seconds and your melee auto attacks extend its duration by 6 seconds. This is going to be pretty awesome if you're in there and you're just constantly focusing on one target. You'll apply this by using your uh, Harpoon. To get into combat and then just never let this thing down or you can reapply it to something else if you have to harpoon to it very interesting ability and it gives some extra action to your harpoon while you're in close combat fluffy go rank zero three increase your pets haste by five ten or fifteen percent embrace of the aspects rank zero one reduces the cooldown of your aspects by twenty percent Bird of Prey, rank 03. Raptor Strike heals you for 3% of damage it deals. And that's going to be 3, 6, or 10%. My Beloved Monster, rank 03. Increases the critical strike chance of flanking strike by 3, 6, or 10%. Talon Strike. Your basic attacks have a chance to trigger two rapid additional blows. This is just going to be additional damage on your damage. Sharpen Fang. Increases damage dealt by Mongoose Bite by 3, 6, or 10% this is going to be it for the artifact we're going to go ahead and move straight on to what everyone wants to see the gameplay yes the survival hunter and by yes i really mean oh man what did we get ourselves into it's a decent spec but it's not that great it's very 
simplified well I'm not gonna use simplified it's a decent melee spec but with all the other melee out there and this game already not favoring melee we didn't really need yet another melee but it does give a little more options than just warriors rets and rogues and you know all the other melee that's out there including the demon hunters really this thing is on the awkward side and the reason for it is the way mongoose bite plays out now the original iteration it was just way too strong there was no way to control it and what that was was when you'd hit mongoose bite it would constantly refresh your time also well they've since changed that route and the first time that you end up using mongoose bite you're actually in a 12 second window to get as many mongoose bites off as possible and then once you get as many up just before you end up going away from that you want to end up using your fury of the eagle which is your 45 second artifact cooldown really solid gameplay around that one ability everything else is just filler now you've got ways of proccing these uh, you can end up using lacerate if you talented for it you want to keep lacerate up all the time mind you in a single target fight or just period then you've got flanking strikes flanking strikes with a pr fairly short cooldown is also another great way to get more stacks of mongoose bite everything plays around mongoose bite mongoose bite mongoose bite mongoose bite that one spell is the bread and butter of this entire spec nothing else everything else is just there to promote mongoose bite really and you've got to get the timing down right so what you're looking at aoe situations you're just basically going to run a normal core rotation but instead of using raptor strike as your filler you're going to use carve as your filler now you can go through and you can lacerate multiple different targets or you can just end up you know specking it to where carve ends up becoming butchery and then you go that route aoe not a whole hell of a lot of fun you're basically looking at single target now in a single target deal what are we looking at here the best part that I can end up mentioning on this is the fact that Mongoose Bite has a generalized window of play. Kind of fits along the same aspects of your Rep pa Paladin that's got a window of play, your Arms Warrior that's got a window of play, all these specs that have a window of play where they're actually going to do their most damage. Now, this damage window through Mongoose Bite basically what you're looking at doing is getting your stacks let's say you first start you're gonna end up going bam 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 straight into mongoose by more than likely using it with your aspect of the eagle off cooldown so you can get as many charges as possible in this 12 second window once you've gotten to the last few seconds of this 12 second window and hopefully you're gonna be up around six stacks you're gonna use fury of the eagle just to maximize your damage now with this being said what else would you do outside of this mongoose bite while they're recharging because you want these to end up recharging back up to as close to three mongoose bites as possible so you can get the max benefit out of these damage windows and during that time you from what i noticed the best way was to go with the expert trapper and get all that additional damage so the first thing that i would end up going for is explosive trap get that thing off cooldown every 15 seconds because normally it's 30 but every 15 seconds use explosive trap it hits extremely hard and it does some really good damage then you've got lacerate that your bleed you want to keep lacerate up at basically all times this thing does a huge amount of damage over a 12 second window and also if spec gives you a chance to get another mongoose bite it takes a decent amount of priority and then you have flanking strikes flanking strikes is the ability where you and your pet bond and you do some weird wonky shit for damage and it's going to also give you a double the normal chance of getting another mongoose bite everything else is going to be tied around mongoose bite and then once you get back into that three mongoose bite window you know or two and a half where it's really close you're gonna want to end up hitting mongoose bite again and go back into that rotation and try and proc as many as you can through your other abilities with this being said that's the gameplay that is the generalized gameplay and that's the way it's going to end up playing let's go ahead and break completely off of this and go straight into the logs to see where the damage is at so here we are we're looking at king deepbeard in the wrath of ashara dungeon and as you can see when i've got my 
uh, Mongoose Bite. Mongoose Bite's going to be the main damage that you're going to see all the way through and through. It's the dark green. It's going to be this guy right through here. And where this damage really ends up taking off, you'll see on Explosive Trap every single time it just jumps. Explosive Trap does a ton of damage for three casts. It is actually second on my meter. Very solid damage out of this ability going Expert Traps. And then Mongoose Bite, obviously, because everything is built around this ability. This is what's going to top your actual meter in every single situation. Now, Explosive Traps here, because I got to use it right along the lines that I also ended up using my uh, base cooldown aspect to the Hawk. I ended up using it and then got a lot of Mongoose Bite damage in. Now, you can see max crit on this was 143,000. Max regular hit 112,000. That's because of that 50% modifier per stack up to 6 stacks. This thing does an insane amount of damage. Fury of the Eagle, your artifact ability. Now, I could have had some better timing with this, but that is where we ended up sitting. Lacerate, again, very solid amounts of damage coming out of Lacerate. Uh, you can see each tick on there did a decent amount of damage. Three applications, 30. But I only had 56% of the uptime. And again, that's because I was trying to keep that Machnathals up. So my Rapture Strike was a little higher than usual, but that Machnathals just really cuts out everything, getting that extra damage application, I guess you'd say. It's not a whole hell of a lot. It does fairly well, but it really clunks up the rotation. And then you've got your pet doing a decent amount of your damage also. Overall, this thing plays fairly decently. Um, let's take a look at Serpentix real quick. Now, you'll see to where I've got three casts and only one hit. That's because he's down in, in that little hole. And he had some issues to where this would actually not end up working that great on certain fights like that. Just like Wrath of Ashara. Couldn't end up getting anything on that for the simple fact that it's down in the hole. And for some reason, when they're down into these little graphics holes, this explosive trap, the trap itself, does not want to actually end up going off. For some reason, it misses them completely. So it's something to keep an eye out for as these, as you can see, I had three casts, only one of them actually hit. And that's because of that same situation. The trap itself would go down in the hole, but the boss being elevated out of it a little bit, I guess, would not actually let this go off. So again, it's going to be situational on where you want to play with it or until they find a fix. It is still beta, it can be fixed. Melee is going to be second place. Mongoose by, by a long shot. Just huge amounts of damage out of this thing. Um, going straight off. And then really there's not a whole hell of a lot you can end up looking at differently. But this is just your general. Last rate's going to do great. Uh, let me switch to Wrath of Ashara and I'll show you. I have zero explosive damage on here. Just for the sim Now we did have a lust. But zero explosive damage on this, and the reason for that is, again, it falls down in the hole and doesn't get proc. But you got Mongoose Bite, Fury of the Eagle, a little bit more timed out, and then Lacerate on an 84%. It should be almost 100% uptime, and that was my fault, again, trying to play with a different spec than uh, trying to keep that Machnathals up. It just really didn't end up working out too well with all the different damage, but that and the fact it only lasted 40 seconds. Fury of the Eagle, pretty high up. Mongoose Bite, yet again, that's going to be your bread and butter in almost every situation. And then your pet still does a pretty solid amount of your damage as SV. I hope you took a little bit of information out of this, and I hope it helped you out with what you're looking for. If it did, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.